Okay, so let's go back to the Radio Access Network. So since Radio Access Network are uh, with us uh, in the long, from very long time already, almost uh, 40 years already, uh, specifically here in the Philippines, uh, we'll take a look at the evolution of these uh, mobile communications. Can you imagine uh, a time when mobile phones did is, didn't exist? Wala tayong mobile phone. So we are um, strapped in, inside the house and then we're just waiting for the call of our special someone. There's a landline. Okay, <laughs> We cannot go outside. Uh, it's hard to believe now, but not too long ago, communication on the go was limited to radio and landline phones, as I mentioned. So that all changed with the introduction of 1G. Okay, or first generation mobile communications in the 1980s. So 1G was the um, first mobile phone technology and used analog signals to enable basic voice calling. And these uh, early mobile uh, phones were large, as you can see in the picture, and expensive, and the network coverage was limited. But despite its uh, limitation, um, 1G laid the foundation for the mobile revolution that was to come. Next was the 2G uh, or the second generation mobile communications. 2G was introduced in the 1990s and enabled basic voice and text messaging services. The famous, most famous killer application actually the killer application of uh, 2G specifically here in the Philippines was the SMS or the text messages, okay, uh, where we became the text capital of the world you know, when they launched the GSM here in the Philippines. There was uh, statistics that uh, states that uh, there was a 100 million SMS per day is generated only in the Philippines. And that is equivalent to 100 million pesos that time because one SMS that time was uh, one peso. Okay, unlike now, we have unlimited. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but during that uh, in time in 1990, one SMS was equivalent to one peso. So you are very fortunate today. You can text unlimited. <laughs> okay, all right. So then uh, came 3G, or the third generation mobile communications. 3G was introduced in early 2000 and brought uh, faster data speeds. Uh, enabling more advanced services like mobile internet, uh, video calls, uh, multimedia messaging. So, dito sumikit yung mga video calls. No? But for most of the Filipinos, uh, don't want to adapt that technology. That's why the video calling was not, was not uh, so successful that time. Because, uh, you know, no? if uh, for, for professionals, and then somebody will call you and then they will see you somewhere. So they don't want, they don't want that kind of uh, invasion of privacy. No? So video call was not so, so successful that time. But the, the, the one that has been uh, successful was the uh, introduction of the smartphones. Okay, Smartphones, especially when uh, iPhone 3G was launched. Okay, So that was the uh, era of uh, the start of the era of the iPhone, okay? And, and, and if you look at this, um, 2G has a data services already. We are using GPRS and Edge. If you, can, if, you, if you will look at your phone, if you see a G in your phone, that means you are connected um, uh, to the network using a GPRS, okay? Probably it's uh, around 56 kbps in speed. And Edge could give you around 100 kbps or 300 kbps top. But uh, when 3G came, uh, it improves to up to 1 or 2 mbps. Okay. Until uh, it evolves to 14 mbps, to 21 mbps, to 42 mbps. Okay. So from 2G, it's a kbps era. 3G is the mbps era. Okay. And then the 100 mbps came in 4G, okay? So, or the fourth generation. So 4G was introduced in the 2010s and brought uh, even faster data speeds. 
uh, better network capacity, and more reliable coverage. So 4G enabled advanced services like streaming video, okay, because the throughput is uh, um, now higher up to uh, 10 Mbps, 15, 20, up to 100 Mbps. Okay? It enables us to do online gaming and mobile payments and pave the way uh, for the Internet of Things or the IoT and other emerging technologies. Okay, so the most famous there is the LTE, okay, the long-term evolution. And now we are in the era of 5G or the fifth generation mobile communications. So 5G promises uh, to be even faster and more capable than 4G with data speeds that are up to 100 times faster than 4G. So if 2G was in kbps, 3G is in mbps, 4G is the 100 mbps, 5G is the start of gigabit per second. Okay, so uh, you can see also in our existing operators that they can meet the one gigabit per second using a speed test in their commercial networks. So 5G is expected, not only that, to enable uh, new and innovative services like augmented reality, autonomous vehicles, and smart cities and to transform the way we live and work. And if you saw the previous Apple um, commercial, I forgot the name, Apple Vision Pro, right? So they are already preparing that uh, augmented reality uh, glasses. Okay, so, but costs a lot, no? <laughs> okay, so it will also, um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, um, technologies will also emerge together with this 5G technology to support the ecosystem. So there you have it, uh, the evolution of mobile communications from 1G to 5G. So each generation has brought a major advancement in mobile technology, and we can't wait to see you know, what the future holds. Okay. 